Welcome back to The Real Estate Show. I'm Lisa Kirsch. We have a special guest joining us this segment. This is David Herman. He's with Gardner Supply Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in today. And people might think, well, real estate show, I think this is perfect because you just bought a new house. Right. You also bought a big lot. Now what do you do? Where do you start? Yeah, whether it's a, a brand new home or just a home new to you, you know, you come to it and at some point you think you want things to grow. Uh, so unfortunately, people think that just throwing water, fertilizer mm -hmm. at something is going to fix it. Um, and that is absolutely essential. Uh, but we always try to ask a lot of questions first because you can throw the wrong kind of fertilizer in the wrong amount of sure. water. So um, we really like to get back to basics. And the first thing we always tell people is to take some soil samples. And ah. so we, uh, we keep these little pipes around so that you can drive them into the ground, good seven, eight inches deep and bring them in. And we do some basic testing mm -hmm. um, of that soil to make sure water is going to penetrate, mm -hmm. roots will penetrate, fertilizer will penetrate. Um, you can and tell all of that just by one little soil sample. Yeah, we have a, a soil doctor on hand and some others trained to test the, the soil. soil doctor. And a little lab right in the middle of the store. Fun. So it's really the heart of our store because if the soil is healthy, then trees, plants, lawns can be healthy. And it's pretty easy to test and others could do it at home. Uh, but it's really the first place to start. And unfortunately, it's more homework for folks when you sometimes want just quick answers. Sure. But this gives you a lot of information by which to tackle your yard and to get things healthy. So after they get that soil, a sample and then they bring it into you then you guys will give them advice on the things that maybe work the best in that particular or how to fix their soil and make it m better for things to grow in yeah that's okay. right you know we, we like to focus or, or differentiate between restoring something to health and maintaining its health cool. so a soil sample can let us know that perhaps the pH balance is so far out that nutrients aren't going to help this particular plant or new or, uh, or tree or or lawn mm -hmm. so we try to balance that pH um, sometimes water isn't penetrating well, and so just doing the same thing over and again isn't going to work until we get water to penetrate, until uh, we get that pH balanced. You know, once we're able to do that from that soil sample, we have all kinds of suggestions. And uh, we always try to take people to our, our calendar, and it's a maintenance calendar, of course, mm. that's predicated over the course of the year. There's seven or eight events that you would uh, consider doing. Um, but really, before you can maintain something, it has to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And so we really want to help people get to the basics, get that soil healthy, give them some suggestions. Sometimes it can take a, a season to turn things around. Sometimes you'll see a, a quicker turnaround. But it's absolutely fundamental to start with good soil health. You mentioned water, and that's a real hot topic, especially with the drought that we're in, the right. hot season coming up. Um, I've heard a lot of people say sometimes people just overwater in Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. How do you know if you're overwatering? It's kind of obvious when you're underwatering, but when when it right. comes to water, that's a whole nother a level of expertise. Yeah, we think that the best use of water is the right use of water. Uh, not to turn the water off and not to flood. And I think many times we make both mistakes. Uh, I have done that both, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and again, back to soil health, if water can penetrate, then we can put the right amount of water in and it can penetrate and roots can penetrate. Mm -hmm. If we have hard pan soils or where it's so tightly compact, water's not penetrating, we know ways by which to loosen up that soil so that that water can penetrate. Some of us, even when we get our soils healthy, um, water still runs off. There might be slopes. So there's things like pulse irrigating, where you can irrigate for a few minutes every hour or two to let water penetrate. There are holes that can be drilled, backfilled with gravel. Water can hit those spots. You have a leach zone. Um, and something as simple as turning on your sprinklers and getting out there and getting wet and adjusting them so water's not hitting the concrete and running off. That's all really good advice. And it's something that doesn't just happen in the summer months. It really is a year-round event. Yeah, we need the water year-round. We'll need sometimes less in the winter and more in the summer. Um, even a Bermuda lawn that goes dormant in the winter looks brown. Some people think it's dead. It's, it's asleep. It's not putting up green growth, but the roots are still growing. If you don't water it, that lawn's roots can recede, and it can mm -hmm. come back slower and, and damaged and more susceptible to disease. It sounds to me like your company is very education-based, and you really want to help people understand what's going on there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, we want to know, and then we want to give good, right advice, and we want people to know and be able to utilize right advice. We don't have a service by which we go out. Our service is an alien enabling people to have that right information, apply it rightly, and then see the results in their, their own yard. So if 
people come to you say they get a bug and put it into, I don't know what this thing is, but it's doing crazy things to my right. lemon tree. Can they bring the bug and the lemon tree a, a part of it to you and we say, love bugs. help this? We love okay. weeds. People bring them in in all kinds of varieties. Uh, we get to see from, from spiders that look odd yeah. to scale on a citrus tree to a leaf miner on a leaf, mm -hmm. um, different uh, insects in, in the grass. We see grubs from soil samples even. Mm. So, yeah, we love it when people bring in the bug, bring in the weed. <laughs> So many smartphones now, so people have their pictures they're bringing with right. them. The soil samples tell us the most uh, because those are primary causes. But when it comes to buzz, bugs or fungus, we're now dealing with secondary causes, which are important, and we know how to target and eradicate. But we want to deal with the whole package deal. I have a question for you when it comes to, um, I had a house several years ago, and nothing would grow in one particular corner. Everything was fine except one corner. And I had a gardener at the time, and he had mentioned to me that maybe when they were building the pool, they were dumping some of the chemicals there, and that could have done it. Does that... Does that make sense? Is that something that could happen if people just have these odd spots that nothing will grow? Yeah, absolutely. You know, construction debris left behind um, is one. Sometimes we just have in our dirt uh, a tremendous amount of complexities and differences from one into the other. We can't assume that one area is the same as the mm -hmm. next. Something could have spilled there. I even noticed when we moved into our new home, there was one area water wasn't penetrating, and I could tell the guys who had stained the cabinets had poured some of their primer and some of the stain oh, there, and it no. wasn't penetrating. I scraped that dirt out, mm -hmm. wrote it tilled in some good soil because I knew that would be poor penetration in that particular area. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lady come in and she had her pool acid washed. And so within five oh. feet around her pool, of course, nothing was really growing. And we had to change the pH structure. We had to bring it up for good root growth, a good root zone again. But that's what's interesting to me is you can change it. It can be fixed. Absolutely. And in a place like Bakersfield, this is a true story. I actually had a realtor tell me when I bought my first house in Bakersfield. This was in 98, something like that. And he said, I said, well, will things grow here? Because, you know, I'm from a place where nothing grows. <laughs> and uh, he says, if you dropped a nail in the backyard, it would grow. And that stayed with me. And now it sounds, you know, it sounds like that's exactly good advice. If you have someone like you who can help you decide what kind of <laughs> soil would grow best with that nail. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, we definitely need to make the soil that's going to be healthy, right amount of water. Also season specific. There are things you do in winter you don't do in summer and vice versa. And just knowing what grows well in the shade or what grows well in the sun and not expecting the wrong kind of plant or lawn to grow in the wrong amount of shade or sun or to grow in the wrong time or season. So just knowing that local specificity is very is crucial. What types of products do you sell at your, at your uh, store? Oh, the highest quality, of course. Good stuff. <laughs> we try to have the best with the best advice for the best results. Mm -hmm. um, for example, we custom blend our fertilizers. So we'll take a nitrogen and slow it down. That way it's metabolized by the grass and isn't washed to the gutters. Mm -hmm. um, we'll take a phosphorus and potassium both. We won't chance on either of them and make sure that we have good root growth. Uh, we take a potassium sulfate. It's a sulfur base, so it assists the nitrogen in green up rather than a potassium chloride, which is actually toxic in a lot of our soils. We have alkali soils because of a more desert climate. And cheaper fertilizers actually can combine with our soils and make for toxicity or poison. Oh my so goodness. we put in the better, more expensive ingredient. Mm -hmm. So in the long run, our bag of fertilizer is going to be more, but it's going to last two to three times as long, be healthier for the lawn or for the tree. So you're actually saving money in the long run by doing the right thing. Great advice. Uh, there's a lot of science going on here yeah, in absolutely. the background. <laughs> right. What is your background? In it's actually um, theology oh. and uh, Greek and Hebrew, and I came in through the back door into soil sciences. Uh, Fantastic. Good friend of the family, uh, mm -hmm. wonderful man before ever being business partners, we're, we're friends. And uh, so I was able to come in and, and learn and uh, grow as, as the manager mm -hmm. and surrounded by a team. There's 14 of us, and we all work very hard wow. to study labels, to study science, to work in the in the soil lab and to apply these things at our own store. So if you roll up, you're going to look at our grass, look at our trees, and uh, there's the test if what we're saying is actually true. I was going to say, I bet your backyard is spectacular. Yeah, well, mine's <laughs> dirt, but it's going to be spectacular in about, uh, right. about a month because we're working on the landscaping That's brand new right. house, and it's great because now I'm running irrigation. I'm preparing holes for trees properly. I'm going to plant the right seed at the right time, go through the whole thing, and then take some pictures so people can see, well, this is what I'm doing in my yard, too. Where can people find the Gardner Supply Incorporated? We are Landco Drive, right off of Rosedale Highway, just about uh, half a mile west of Costco. Big County Street, you can only go north, and there's a wonderful train track just next to there that might stop you on your way. That's right. I believe I have been there. Well, David, thank you so much for coming in today. We really appreciate you Absolutely. sharing your time and expertise with us. Thank you so much. Hey, come back and see us sometime. Okay. Thank you. When we come back, Diana Canada from Guild Mortgage is joining us with the all-important prequal letter, what it is, why you need it, and how to get one. 
this and much more when The Real Estate Show continues.